Today I'm talking about bracing and bird dogs. Now creating a strong abdominal brace is a must for anyone who is going to lift any kind of significant weight. And that is relative to them, of course. Often the emphasis for people when performing squats and deadlifts is just purely to avoid rounding the back. So people will learn these exercises and just focus on keeping their back what they would consider straight, which often results in excessive amounts of lumbar curve occurring in those exercises and very little abdominal engagement. Now, abdominal bracing is the use of the muscles around your midline to maintain the lumbar spine in a fixed position. It is often used for heavier lifts in conjunction with the Valsalva technique. This is a breathing technique that helps create pressure and stability in the torso and should be applied when athletes are lifting significantly heavy weights. I'll go into this more in a future episode, but that's all you need to know on the Valsalva technique for today. Now, one of the best exercises for learning abdominal bracing is the bird dog. It seems a really simple exercise, and for that reason, it's often butchered by people when performing it. If you perform this correctly, it's an excellent tool for learning how to engage the abdominals whilst extending the hip and flexing the shoulder. If you perform this poorly, it does absolutely nothing. So, to perform the bird dog correctly, the first thing we need to do is we're going to get on all fours. We're going to bring our hands directly below our shoulders and our knees directly under the hips, like this. Now, from this position here, what we need to establish, first of all, is a neutral spine. So what I'm going to do from here, I'm going to go into this position where I'm extending my spine, so I'm tilting my pelvis anteriorly, like this. So like I'm pouring water out onto the floor through my pelvis here. From there, I'm going to then go the opposite way, and I'm going to tuck my pelvis under and round my back fully. I'm going to repeat that one more time back into that extended position here. Now from this extended position with my pelvis tipping forward, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to square up my pelvis. So I'm going to engage my abs, like so. Nice tight midline and a flat back position. Really important to do it that way around because when you do it that way around, it helps you to feel the engagement of the abdominals. When I go from this Extended position here, engage my abdominals. That's a great trigger to feel what a brace should feel like. What we're going to do now is extend opposite arm and opposite leg, like so. We're trying to get full extension. I'm reaching to the opposite sides of the room here. Now, whilst I'm doing this movement, what I'm focusing on is not losing the spinal position are created. So keeping that position fixed. I'm going to re-establish that position. Keep this engagement here, so squeezing these abdominals to maintain the space between my ribs and my pelvis, not allowing that to increase or decrease. And once again in the position where my finger through to my toe creates as straight a line as possible. What you'll see when I do mine is there's a little bit of limitation in my shoulder. You can see my upper back is slightly excessively rounded, which limits my shoulder mobility. So that means I have to work super hard to create the right position. Now this exercise looks easy, but it's much harder than you might think. Because what we're trying to do is get fully into hip extension and fully into shoulder flexion to that position where if you were pressing overhead, your arms would be vertical. If I can get my arm fully flexed and my hip fully extended whilst keeping that brace, that is a great indicator that I have good midline control. With the leg extension, 
what we're actually trying to achieve is full extension of the hip here, so I should feel an engagement in my glute whilst I'm doing this. So if you can get your glute engaged, keeping your midline braced, that's going to represent the same as if you were doing a deadlift, running, jumping, squats, deadlifts, any compound lower body exercises, you need to be able to maintain this brace whilst being able to contract the glute. If you cannot do that, then that indicates you have a problem either with the abdominal bracing or with the mobility through the hip flexors or glute engagement. And that's something that you can use the bird dog to help correct in addition to some other exercise. The other part of the exercise is obviously moving this arm into that flexed position, as we call it there, so the position where, where I am now is in horizontal, but if I was pressing, it would be in the vertical position here. If you struggle to get that arm in line with the ear whilst maintaining this position, it may well indicate a lack of shoulder mobility. And what will happen is, to get that position in a bird dog, you'll extend your back. And that will be recreated when you are pressing overhead as well. Lose this brace in the midline, you extend your lower back, create this tightness through your lumbar region of your spine, very compromised overhead position. That will apply also if you're doing handstand press-ups. So that lack, that loss of midline stabilization, whether that's in hip extension or pressing overhead, that causes the same consequences. You will lose efficiency, so therefore you'll lose the power you can create, and probably more importantly, you'll greatly increase the risk of injury. I like to use the bird dog as well as a great screening tool for identifying those issues. So can an athlete, first of all, engage the midline to even get into neutral spine? That's often quite difficult for some people to even get to that first position of getting the start point. And then has, is there a limitation in the shoulder or hip range of motion? Can you get to full hip extension without losing it? Can you get to full shoulder extension? Is it a matter of the neuromuscular, so the, the brain to the muscle connection, you just can't turn that midline on, or is it uh, a mobility issue? More often than not, it might be a combination of the two. Now, what I would suggest you do is you use your bird dogs frequently as a warm-up, especially on heavy days when you're going to require a good abdominal brace. New athletes should be doing it most days, really trying to train the brain and the muscles to be able to create that position on demand because we often move heavy weights or we're moving fast. You need to be able to do it like this. It shouldn't be something that you have to think long and hard and concentrate on. You have to train that though, that ability, and then you can apply it to lifting. Now, a final point on bracing. In the bird dog, we do bracing in lumbar neutral. I think it's often confused that we only ever brace in lumbar neutral. We only ever lift weights in lumbar neutral position. Well, that's not the case because if you think about life, you're not going to be always in lumbar neutral. A lot of times in life, you're going to actually be lifting stuff from a flexed spine. And that may be forward flexion or that may be, lat may be lateral flexion. I've got a ball here, a D ball. And if I'm picking this one up from the floor, then I'm going to get into a position where I'm in a bit of forward flexion here in my spine. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to maintain that brace. Those of you listening in here, you can hear the strain. Whilst I'm picking that weight up. So I'm not changing the position of my spine relative to flexion or extension. I'm bracing it in that flexed position. So it's really important actually to involve some form of training through a flex position in your workouts at some point to make sure you're preparing yourself for everyday life. In, in addition, you may need to do it in a, in a lateral position, so you may be in an awkward stance here where the, the weight's slightly off to the side, and you're picking it up, and you're bracing laterally, so the weight's slightly off to one side. I mean, what does this represent? Picking up a child, quite a heavy child if you've got a 30 kilo, Charge you're picking up on a regular basis, quite a big child. 
but it could be a bag of compost or just anything you're picking out the car, being able to maintain that brace is going to protect your spine for those injuries that often occur, the ones that sort of take you by surprise, just picking something up from an awkward angle. The ability to brace at all angles is really, really important. So it's not just lumbar neutral. In fact, if you look at exercises like the overhead squat, um, the snatch, the Olympic lift, you will begin more extended in a lot of cases, and you still need to maintain a brace in spite of the fact you're actually putting a little bit more extended than you would be if you were performing uh, a regular deadlift from the floor. So bracing is the ability to use your midline muscles to create tightness and stability and increase our ability to produce power and greatly reduce our risk of injury. Your homework, once you finish watching this video, is to test your ability to perform a bird dog. Can you do so keeping those abdominals braced, keeping the space between your pelvis and your rib cage exactly the same? Can you get your glute to contract and your arm to drive up in line with your ear? So you've got that full extended, or sorry, flexed position through the shoulder. I like to perform time-based work rather than rep-based, so you can spend a bit of time on each rep. You're not rushing to just get the work done. So at least one minute performing bird dogs, a couple of sets of that. Test it out. There you go. Now, if you've got any questions or comments, please put them below. If you want me to answer any questions on any other subjects, I'm happy to do so. Drop me an email, jeremy at crossfitchilton.com. Speak to you soon.